Welcome! Today we are going to make a fun and beginner-friendly roll-up pillowcase which has a nice little accent trim and a coordinating cuff fabric. We are also going to learn how to add a monogram to the cuff fabric. Let's start sewing! To get started, you are going to need 27 inches of your main pillowcase fabric. Now, my grandparents were huge Dodger fans, and so were my parents, and now myself and my siblings are all Dodger fans and our kids. And so I was thrilled to find this Dodger fabric available at my favorite flannel shop, the Flannel Queen, and I'll put a link in the description below where you can find this Dodger fabric, but you can use any flannel or any cotton. It doesn't matter if it's flannel or cotton for this project. It's super versatile. Um, for winter, um, you might want to use the flannel, and for the warmer months, use the cotton fabric. So 27 inches of that main fabric, and then you're going to want 9 inches or a quarter yard of your cuff fabric, and then you're going to want 2 and a quarter inches, uh, 2 and a quarter inch by width of fabric strip of the trim fabric. Now, um, to add the monogram, you're going to want just a little bit extra of whatever fabric you will be monogramming with. So I um, am going to use the star fabric, which I think looks really nice against this check. The star, I'm not sure what fabric, fabric manufacturer this comes from. This check is from Riley Blake Designs. It's a nice navy check flannel. Um, so if you want to go ahead with the monogram portion at the end of this video, then just have a little bit extra, probably of your little accent fabric. But if you have another fabric that um, will accent nicely, then go ahead and use that. First step we're going to do is we're going to take this accent fabric to our ironing board and we're going to fold it in half and press it. All right, so I have pressed my trim in half along this long edge so you can see, I'll open it up, it's just pressed in half. And now we're ready to assemble our pillowcase. And from here until it's finished, this is fast. This is beginner friendly. You can teach children to make this. Uh, it takes probably about 10 minutes um, or, you know, it can take longer if you're really taking your time or very new at this, but really not that, that long. This is a quick and easy project. So the first thing I'm going to do, you can see I'm laying out the cuff fabric first, right side up. So the printed side is facing up. And then this part is going to feel wrong, and trust me, it's not wrong. You are going to now lay the main body of your pillowcase also right side up. Now, you can see here I have this uh, Riley Blake Designs um, little words right there, and I don't want that to show up in my pillowcase, and I know that this fabric is longer than my main body fabric. So I'm just going to let this hang out. Um, and then I'll trim that off later. So I'm going to layer that. And then the third layer is our little trim. So as I layer these, I am going to clip or pin. If you have um, regular sewing pins, you can just use those. I am choosing to clip today, but it doesn't matter. Now you're clipping these in place and then we'll have to reclip in just a moment, but these this is going to hold everything in place for now. And just every every few inches, clip or pin. Now I'll tell you a, a fun Dodger story. When I was growing up, um, our grandparents lived close by, and we would go to church with them. And one Sunday. Uh, my grandmother would not miss church. She wouldn't, definitely wouldn't go to a Dodger game on a Sunday, but she would listen. And one Sunday, I don't know if they were in the World Series or what was going on, but there was a Dodger game. And she brought her old little portable radio to church. And during the service, she had earphones in and was listening to the Dodger game and taking stats. She <laughs> she took stats of all the games and I'll never forget that grandma taking stats of the Dodger game during our church service. It was so cute. She was a true 
Dodger fan. All right, <clears throat> so we've got this all pinned in place. And our next step, and this is the trick to the whole thing, is we're going to take the main body of the fabric, and I like to kind of fold it in half, and then lay this out flat, and then we're gonna roll it up into one long roll. Oh, that's a little bit messy on this end, hang on. So just a long, thin roll, thin enough that our cuff can reach around it. So you see that? It's in a roll, and now, this is where I said we have to repin. We're gonna take our cuff, and we're gonna roll it right around it, and pin or clip it in place so that the edge lines up. Look at all of these raw edges lining up. Just like that. So the long edge is the width of the fabric for every single piece. So this is really easy to keep straight in your head. No matter how wide your fabric is, the length is all pretty much the same. Now each manufacturer does make their fabric slightly different length so or width. So um, some are 42 inches, some might be 44. So you'll see like my Riley Blake fabric is the longest width. It's the, mo the widest fabric. And then I'm not sure what this star one is. And then this um, Dodger one is the shortest and that's fine. So we'll just adjust our pillowcase to the shortest width there. So now it's all pinned up. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna stitch a quarter inch from this raw edge all along uh, this whole length of our little roll that we've made. So let's take this to the sewing machine. So now we're ready to sew. Let's sew a quarter inch seam allowance here, which simply means you're sewing a quarter of an inch from the raw edge. So let me grab my bag, put the clips in. Okay, so normally when I would sew something like this, I would want to use my serger or a zigzag stitch along this edge. But this edge will be encased in the cuff and we're going to top stitch over it so it will be very secure. So our next step is to unroll our little tube here. So you may be wondering how we're going to do this. We've got this tube, everything's rolled up in it and it's super easy. We're gonna reach in and we're gonna grab the fabric and what we're grabbing is that main um, body fabric of the pillowcase and we're just going to gently pull it out of the tube. Okay, so here you can see, let's unroll our Dodger fabric. And you can see we have our cuff, our trim, and our main body of the fabric. So the next step that I'm going to do is I'm gonna take this to my ironing board and I'm gonna press that cuff and trim so that it's nice and crisp. And then we'll bring it back here and we'll top stitch. All right, so we are ready to top stitch and we're gonna to top stitch right here on the check fabric, just about a quarter of an inch, maybe a scant quarter of an inch away from this seam between our star fabric and our cuff, which is this check fabric. Now, you'll also see that these edges here are uneven. Don't worry about that. We'll take care of that in just a minute. So I'm gonna start top stitching now. Time 
to trim those ends. Now, as you see, again, we've got the wording here for, um, this just basically talks about the fabric print and the manufacturer. I don't want that to show. So I am going to fold this over where I can see it. And I'm going to just trim, trim that off along with this extra cuff and trim fabric. And then on this other side, I am fine. We do have like a little bit of salvage here, but you can't tell and that's gonna be hidden in the seam. So I'm not going to worry about that. And I'm just going to trim off this extra fabric. So now we are ready to go. Now you have two ways that you can do this. If you have a serger or if you want to just use a zigzag stitch, you will fold this right sides together like so. And you'll just stitch around. Let's see, let me get this so I can show you. You will stitch around this side and then down the bottom of, of the pillowcase. I'm gonna show you how to do a French seam. And a French seam is great when you do not have a serger. And um, it's really attractive to look at because it hides everything. And it feels counterintuitive because we are going to be sewing beginning by sewing this pillowcase right or wrong sides together but i promise it will work out so i'm just going to clip this in a few places so that our right sides are facing out and um my the bottom of my pillowcase the most important thing that i have found is to line up my trim the seam that's at my trim with the other side so you can see i've lined those up and the top of the pillowcase if those are lined up then i follow from there and what usually happens is at the bottom of my pillowcase it's going to be a little uneven so what i do is i only start by sewing this long side then i will take this and just trim off anything that's uneven on the bottom before i sew the bottom so let's start by sewing along this side of the pillowcase. The important thing to know when we're sewing along the side of our pillowcase is that typically we will use a 1 4 inch seam allowance, but here we're gonna sew 1 8 inch. So a very tiny seam allowance here. And because it's so small, you just need to take extra care that your fabric is all matching up along this side so that you catch all of it in your seam allowance. Just go carefully over this bulky seam here. Take your time. And we'll sew the rest along this side here. So now you can see I just have a little bit of unevenness here and I'm going to take that to my cutting mat and trim it and then we'll come back and do the bottom part. The bottom of my pillowcase is trimmed and I'm just going to continue with that 1 8 inch seam allowance along the bottom. Okay, so to reduce bulk, when we turn this inside out, we are going to just trim close to that corner stitch, not through that corner thread stitch, just close to it. And same here, just close to the thread. It'll help reduce a little bit of that bulk. 
Um, another thing that people like to do, here's another option, is you can kind of trim a little bit longer along the side, starting close to your thread and working outward, just like that. So let me do it on this one. Just like that. So you'll see we got close to that thread and just reduce bulk in that corner. All right, so now we're gonna turn this so that the wrong side is facing out. And I'm gonna kind of bring those corners through. <clears throat> now I have this um, nice little tool from Riley Blake Designs. Um, it was designed by Flamingo Toes and it's really great at just poking those corners. I love this tool. You've just gotta be careful not to make it poke all the way through your fabric. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this to my ironing board and I'm gonna press, here's my side seam. So I'm gonna press that side seam, preparing it to stitch along the side seam. So let's go give it a good press. I have pressed my seams, here's my side seam. And now we are going to stitch a quarter inch from the side. So before we did an eighth inch, now it's a quarter inch. And what happens is you'll see our tiny eighth inch seam in there. It's gonna get encased in that quarter inch seam so that you will not see it when you turn it right side out. So lining up the top, making sure that's all straight. And we're gonna get started. And when you get over this um, seam here where your cuff and your accent fabric and your body of the pillowcase are. That's a lot of fabric, so this can get bulky, especially when you're working with flannel. So just take your time and um, gently go over that little area. Now you see when I'm going over this, I'm gently, not not being rough with it, but I'm gently pulling from this side just to help guide it so it doesn't get jammed over this little bulky part. And then we are just gonna continue all the way down the long edge and along the bottom edge, one quarter inch seam allowance. That's all there is to it. So we are going to turn this right side out. And if you do not want to add a monogram, then you're done. There's your pillowcase ready to go. You can um, use this right away. It can be washed and dried as many times as you need. It's gonna hold together really nicely because you've um, top stitched it and all your seams are beautifully now encased. Here's what the inside looks like. So you have no raw edges. So this should last you a very long time. Okay, well, our family lived for two years in the South, and that was long enough for me to learn that everything is better with a monogram, right? So we, I'm gonna show you how to quickly add a monogram to the cuff of your pillowcase, if you want to do that. So I had just some little scraps left of the star fabric, and I am using Heat and Bond Light and um, what this is, it's a double-sided fusible adhesive. So again, it's called Heat and Bond Light, and I will put the information in the description below. Um, and what I did is I um, just cut out just enough for my little scrap of fabric, and I pressed it to the wrong side of my fabric. So now I've got 
this bumpy side of the heat and bond light, that's what I pressed the wrong side of my fabric to. And I ended up with now the right side of my fabric showing and the back side is this paper. The bumpy glue side was pressed to the wrong side of the fabric. And there you can see it, that's the glue that was pressed onto there. Now to make the monogram, a traditional monogram, the last name, that initial is going to be the large letter. And then the smaller letters are the first initial, which will be on the left and the middle initial to the right of that large last name initial. So you can see there. I'm just going to pin these in place. like that, and then we're going to cut them out. So now we are just going to take off the paper and pins. And what we want to do now is mark the center of our pillowcase so we can center our monogram. So I'm just going to fold it in half. And I just like to easily just take a pin and mark it. That's my center. Now I'm going to place the C in the center. So I just kind of want to make sure this is positioned pretty well in the center. It doesn't have to be exact. And I am going to peel off the paper. Well, I'll position it after I peel off that paper. We'll do that again. Okay, so that's in a good place. So now I'm going to take this to my ironing board and press it. And because I've peeled off the paper, that glue is ready to go. So all I have to do is press it into place. Now we're just gonna do the same thing for the first and middle initial. We're going to peel off that paper backing. Just gotta, the trick is just getting a hold of it without peeling off the actual glued glue. There we go. And just place it where we want it. And you can just move it around. It's not stuck once you place it down. So you can move it around to get it exactly where you want it. I'll get my ruler and just see if we're, yep. So we are good here. So now I'm going to take this to my ironing board and press it and then we will stitch it in place. There are multiple ways to stitch it in place. Uh, you can do a tight zigzag around the edges of your letters, um, or you can do a blanket stitch around the edges of your letters by hand or by machine. Um, I am using a, a straight stitch only machine. And so the way that I am going to do this is to just um, I changed out my foot to my free motion quilt 
and I'm gonna do scribble drawing lines around the edges and I really like how it looks and it's super quick and easy. So I'll show you on this pillowcase. Um, I already have finished this and it's not that easy to see my stitching because I used red thread. So it blends in with the fabric. So, um, and that's a great option if you don't really want to see the stitching. With this one, I am going to use a navy blue thread so that you will see the stitching and then you can see the contrast between the two. So I'm opening it up because I don't want to stitch through the other um, part of the pillowcase. And we'll just start with the letter J. And I'm just going to start drawing. These are going to be squiggly lines. They don't need to be straight. And I'm going to go over each edge a couple of times. So we'll just begin now. So there the J is done and we'll start on the C now. Now I want you to see how I intentionally made it very scribbly looking. You want it to look like a scribble drawing. And so now we're going to do the T and we'll be done. There it is. So you can see the thread becomes part of the focal point on this. And this is a really fun option. Again, we can compare it to the one with the red thread and you can see the difference between the two. There's the blue thread and there's the red thread. So the pillowcases are done and ready to go. Easy peasy, quick and easy gift idea that will be used and loved for years to come. Be sure to hop on over to my blog. The link will be in the description below where you can find a photograph, step-by-step -step written tutorial for these same pillowcases. If you like written instructions, that's really handy to have. And you'll also find a, P a link to the PDF where you can print off the letters for the monogram to use for your own projects. Again, we're thankful for the Flannel Queen shop. You can go to flannelqueen.com. Link will be in the description below um, for providing us with this fun Dodger baseball flannel. We are huge fans and this was super fun to work with. If you like this content, please subscribe and hit the like button. Have a great day.